Hey everyone, welcome back. So at the end of the last lecture, we summarized some of the things that we learned about the get user um, or the get data element and how we were applying it to the user record. We also discussed a little bit further the naming convention for our flow and its impact on the list view of flows here. In this lecture, we're gonna talk about how to update our task owner based on the value we found with our get user um, element or our get element that is finding a user. And so if you'll recall, when the flow kicks off, it is triggered by the assigned coordinator value changing. And so whenever this pick list changes, we then do a lookup or we use a get element. And I kind of use the words uh, lookup and get interchangeably. Um, and when we look at this element, we are going to find records of the user object um, based on the name. And that's a pretty unique thing where you know, we're just looking for a name match, which is cool. I, I like that. Um, and so now that we, we have found this, you know, the flow, the pick list changes, we find the name. Once we do find the name, we need to update the task. And so the way to do that is by um, adding an element. And there's actually two approaches here. One, you could add the update records data element down here at the bottom. Uh, the second way is to use an assignment operator. And I want to make it really clear that this assignment operator only works if you're optimizing the flow for fast field updates. And we are doing that here, so the assignment operator will work. And that's just how it worked in our previous challenge with the potential value field on leads. So um, I'm gonna select the assignment operator, which I've already done, and I'll just label it update task owner. Oops, task owner. And this is where we set the fields. So I'm gonna click uh, search variables. And again, we're gonna get some practice just using the global variable for tasks. So I'm gonna say the task, and then I need to find a field here that represents the owner. So I'm gonna scroll down, just looking for the owner ID. And you'll see that the label up here is owner ID, and then we have assigned to ID here. And uh, typically the top part will be the label, and then the bottom part's the API name. So I'll do that. And now we need to set the owner of the task equal to the user that we found. And so the way to do that is by clicking the value section here and you'll notice that we have a new uh, variable that's available. And this is something else that's really cool about the get data element inside the flow builder is that when you use a get data element, the flow will automatically create a record variable for you to reference that data element, um, more specifically the record that the data element finds. So we see here that this record single variable uh, is called user from get user in pick list. And if you'll remember, that's what we named our, our get records. So this um, is now available because we used a get records and we said store all the fields. So that's another benefit of storing all the fields. And all we have to do is just click on it. And every field available on the user object itself, uh, not just this specific user, but every field on the user object is now available. And so we can reference the specific um, user ID by finding that ID here in the field list. And it's right there. So I scroll down to I and you see ID and user ID. So I can select that. And now this will dynamically fill in uh, no matter who the user is. So if we pick, um, or I guess if the assigned coordinator field is Bob Apples, our get data element will run looking for Bob Apples as the name. It will find Bob Apples and then when we get to this assignment portion of the flow, the value that is assigned to the owner will dynamically reference uh, whichever user is found in the get records. So if it was Bob Apples or Tina Apples or someone else, um, it won't matter because it will just say, okay, get the user um, from the data element and then whoever it is, just, just pull that ID and assign it to the task owner. So hopefully that wasn't too uh, convoluted of an explanation, but that's effectively what we're doing here. I'm gonna press done now that that's all set up and I will press save. And so that's it. That's all we have to do. Pretty simple, right? So typically when you're developing or building out a flow, you would be in a sandbox environment and we would use this debug button here to test the flow. I'm gonna skip doing that to kind of make a point uh, a little bit later in the lecture. And that has to do with the bug that I told you we set up um, intentionally. Well, I set it up intentionally inside our entry conditions. So just uh, we'll keep that in mind as we go into the next steps. 
And uh, all we have to do for now is just press save and activate, which is not best practice to just uh, turn things on in production without debugging them, but we can do that because this is a, you know, a test environment. In the next lecture, we're gonna go test this in the UI. We'll experience our very first bug, and then we'll come back to the flow canvas and do some debugging.